television network commonly shortened to the WBM short for Warner Burrows was an American television network first launched on broadcast television on January 11, 1995 at a joint venture between the Warner Brothers. Entertainment division of Time Warner and the Tribune Broadcasting subsidiary of the Tribune Company, with the former acting as controlling partner. The network principally aired programs targeting teenagers and young adults between the ages of 12 and 34, with its children's division, Kids WB, geared toward children ages 6 to 12. The common metonym of the network called a frog, referring to a former mascot Michigan shape frog. On January 24, 2006, CBS Corporation and Warner Brothers Entertainment announced plans to shut down the network and launch the CW later that same year. The WB Television Network shut down on September 17, 2006 with select programs from both the and competitor to UPN which had shut down two days earlier moving to the CW when it launched the following day, September 18. Time Warner reused the WB brand for an online network that launched on April 28, 2008, over 19 months after the WB ceased broadcasting operations. Until it was discontinued in December 2013, the website allowed users to watch shows aired on the former television network, as well as original programming and shows formerly hosted on the now defunct N2 TV service which itself was created prior to Time Warner's spin-off of AOL. The website could only be accessed within the United States. 1995 to 1997 beginnings the WB television network premiered on January 11, 1995, with the inaugural episode of the Wayans Brothers' a sitcom starring comedians Sean and Marlon Wayans, as its first program the classic Warner Brothers cartoon character Michigan J. Frog appeared on air. As the network's official mascot with animator Chuck Jones, in person, drawing him out after Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck argued about who should launch the WB during the network's premiere and would remain as part of the network's branding in one form or another until 2005. WB affiliates introduced their station ID where the WB letters being projected on the Warner Brothers studio lot while moving, then the WB letters light up before turning off and the logo for the station affiliated with the network zooms out shortly thereafter accompanied by an orchestral version of Hello Mall Baby. Much of the network's branding was based around Warner Brothers locations and characters, the television network's original logo which was originally displayed upright until 1998 and displayed it a titled angle thereafter was based on the typography of the iconic Warner Brothers. Picture Shield logo, network promotions and imaging campaigns for the WB and the Kids WB block from their launches until the 2003 to 2004 season were also centered on the Warner Brothers. Studios backlit, often involving large neon signs promoting the nights of programming and their component shows, at times including signs for kids WB and certain shows from that block. This approach was similar to one used for Fox's 1989-1990 This is the year fall campaign likely thanks to Kellner and Ansi previously having worked at Fox the WB's scheduling structure was similar to Fox's when it launched, as it started with one night a week of programming and then gradually added additional nights of programming over the course of several seasons. The network started with a two-hour Wednesday night lineup of sitcoms, airing from 8 o'clock to 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time. 
the limited amount of network programming in the WB's early years essentially rendered its affiliates as nominal independent stations. Because of this, affiliates held the responsibility of programming primetime slots on nights that the network did not program, airing either first run in or off network syndicated programs or more commonly, movies. The network's first programs were mostly sitcoms targeted at an ethnically black audience, even though four of the five shows that debuted in the network's first nine months were renewed beyond the first year the Wayans Brothers, unhappily ever after a dysfunctional family sitcom from Married with Children co-creator Ron Levitt the parenthood of family sitcom starring and co-created by Robert Townsend and sister, sister a teen blended family sitcom starring Shia and Tamara Mori that was picked up by the network after its cancellation by ABC in the spring of 1995, none of them made a significant impact. On August 17, 1995, the Tribune Company acquired the 12.5% limited partnership interest in the WB for $12 million. The deal gave Tribune an option to increase its stake in the network up to a 25% interest. Tribune would eventually increase its ownership share in the WB to 22.5% on March 31, 1997. The WB expanded its programming to Sunday nights for the 1995-1996 season, but none of the new shows including the Kirk Cameron vehicle Kirk and nighttime soap opera Savannah managed to garner much viewing interest. The network also launched the kids' WB programming block in September 1995 which featured a mix of existing Warner Brothers animated series that originated either on Fox Kids or in syndication and originally aired on Monday through Saturday morning. The WB continued to expand in the 1996-1997 season, adding programming on Monday nights this season gave the WB modest hits in the air and spelling produced family drama Seventh Heaven centering on a reverend and his family and comedies the Steve Harvey show starring Harvey as a funk musician working as a music teacher at an inner city Chicago high school and the Jamie Foxx show starring Fox as an aspiring actor senior working at a Los Angeles hotel owned by his aunt and uncle. 97 to 2000 courting the teen market the WB first began to experience success with Buffy the Vampire Slayer a series based on the 1992 film of the same name which became a hit with critics when it premiered as a mid-season replacement in March 1997. The series was produced by 20th Century Fox Television and it debuted with the highest Monday night ratings in the network's history, attracting not only new teenage viewers, but new advertisers as well. Inspired by Buffy's success, the WB intentionally shifted the focus of its programming, trying to capture what it perceived to be a heavily fragmented market by marketing to the undercourted teen demographic. While the Fox Network, the previous destination for teen television, with shows such as Beverly Hills 9020, Party of Five and Parker Lewis Can't Lose began to court older audiences with shows such as Ally McBeal, the WB began to craft its identity with programs targeted at teenagers. The network's breakup hit and, arguably, its signature series was Dawson's Creek, which debuted in January 1998 to what were then the highest ratings in the network's history and made stars out of its four principal actors, James Van Der Beek, Michelle Williams, Joshua Jackson, and Katie Holmes the series was produced by Columbia TriStar Television and it quickly became the highest rated show on television among teenage girls, 
and the most popular program on the WB. The popularity of Dawson helped boost the network's other shows, such as Buffy, which served as its lead-in on the WB's new night of programming that also launched in January 1998 branded as New Tuesday and Seventh Heaven, which enjoyed a massive 81% increase in viewership that season. With three hit shows in its roster, the WB continued to build its teen fan base the following season with college drama Felicity which made a star out of Lee Carey Russell and the Wicca theme Charmed which was also produced by Aaron Spelling and co-starred Alyssa Milano. Holly Marie Combs and 90,210 alumnus Shannon Doherty both of which set new records for the network when they respectively premiere to 7.1 and 7.7 .7 million viewers. Charm had the highest rated premiere on the network until Smallville broke its record, debuting to 8.4 million viewers in October 2001. At the start of the 1998-1999 season, the network expanded its programming to Thursday nights. That season, Seventh Heaven overtook Dawson's Creek as the network's highest rated program, and garnered the WB the highest ratings it would ever see. The show's February 8, 1999 episode attracted 12.5 million viewers. 1999-2000 season, the network concluded its primetime expansion with the addition of programming on Friday nights. New shows that season included Roswell, Popular, and the Buffy the Vampire Slayer spin-off Angel the Latter of which premiered with 7.5 million viewers the second highest rated premiere for the network at the time. During the season, the WB was the only network to have gains in its total audience viewership and in each key demographic. To 2003 broadening the focus, as the teen boom of the late 1990s began to wane, the WB attempted to broaden the scope of its primetime lineup. Although teen-oriented Fairlife Popular and Rothwell had premiered to strong ratings, both series saw serious ratings erosion in their sophomore seasons, leading the network to cancel them both Roswell, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, would end up being revived by rival network up meanwhile, even though ratings for 7th Heaven, Buffy and Charmed remained consistent, viewership for flagship series such as Felicity and Dawson's Creek began sagging. The network realized that it could no longer rely merely on the tastes of young teenage girls, and thus began moving back into more family-friendly fare, attempting to launch a successful sitcom, and generally targeting a more diverse audience. After GK, as the WB had dropped to sixth place in the ratings among all major broadcast networks behind up during the 1999-2000 season, losing 19% of its household audience. Executives for the network attributed the ratings decline in large part due to the Tribune Company's decision to remove WB network programming from WGN-TV's Superstation feeds in October 1999 on the pretense that the network's national distribution was large enough that it was no longer necessary for WGN to broadcast the WB's programs outside of Chicago, the network reached several affiliation deals. During the prior four years with various station owners such as the Sinclair Broadcast Group and Pappas Telecasting Companies buoyed by the September 1998 launch of the WB100 Plus Station Group, a national cable-only service that served most of the 110 smallest Nielsen media markets in the United States that did not have enough television stations to support an over-the-air affiliate. 
the removal of the WB's programs from the WGN national feed effectively reduced the network's potential household audience by 10 million homes. WGN TV continued to carry WB programming over the air and on cable within the Chicago market until the network shut down in 2006. Despite the slight downturn in the network's fortunes, there were a few bright spots during the era. Gilmore Girls, which debuted in 2000, netted meager ratings when it debuted in a tough Thursday time slit where it competed against NBC's powerhouse must-see TV lineup but subsequently grew into one of the network's most successful shows after moving to Tuesdays in 2001, where it remained for six seasons before moving to the CW for its seventh and final season. Also in the fall of 2000, the fantasy sitcom Sabrina, the teenage witch moved from ABC to the WB. As part of its Friday night schedule, the show continued on the network for three more seasons before ending in May 2003. Time Warner transferred operational duties for the WB from Warner Brothers over to its Turner Broadcasting System division in 2001. On November 12, 2002, Chairman Jamie Kellner who became Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Turner Broadcasting System concurrent with that deal sold his 11% stake in the WD to majority corporate parent AOL Time Warner, leaving it and minority owner, the Tribune Company, as the only partners in the network following Kellner's departure. From Turner, OL Time Warner reassigned the network's operations back to the Warner Brothers unit in 2003. In October 2001, the Superman-inspired Smallville debuted with 8.4 million viewers, the highest-rated premiere in the history of the network that show was also important because it was one of the few series that drew a substantial male viewership. 2001 also saw the launch of the Reba McIntyre vehicle Reba. Arguably the network's most successful comedic series Reba and Sabrina served as the linchpins for a new Friday night sitcom block that debuted in October 2001 delayed from a mid-September launch as other networks did with their fall schedules following the September 11th terrorist attacks and continued for much of the remainder of the network's run comedies on that night were relegated to one hour in April 2006 with reality series filling the 8 p.m. hour other series to gain attention during this period were the family drama Everwood and the short-lived but critically acclaimed soap satire Gross Want. 2003 to 2006 declined despite some early success the network struggled to shift its focus from the female 12 to 24 demographic to the broader 12 to 34 range in its attempt to attract a broader young adult audience. In 2005, the network retired Michigan J. Frog as the network's trademark mascot. The WB's president of entertainment at the time, David Janolary, explained in July 2005 at the network's summer press tour that Michigan was a symbol that perpetuated the young teen feel of the network. That's not the image we now want to put to our audience still. The move did not seem to help the network. The period from 2003 to 2005 produced only three viable new series, the teen-oriented drama One Tree Hill, social experiment reality competition Beauty and the Jeep, and fantasy drama Supernatural, all of which ultimately moved to successor network the CW and even still their ratings paled in comparison to the ratings peaks of Dawson's Creek which had ended its run in May 2003. Ratings dropped for many of the WB's shows, while also cancelling shows with steady ratings such as Angel the Network failed to launch new hit shows to take their places. 
Although the WD's well-known inability to launch successful comedy series was nothing new, Reba being the sole exception this period saw the network struggling to establish new dramas as well. High-profile failures included Birds of Prey, a series inspired by the Batman mythos, which premiered in October 2002 with an impressive eight-year Tarzan, Jack and Bobby, The Mountain, the Jerry Bruckheimer produced legal dramedy Just Legal, the Marty Kaufman created dramedy Related, and the Rebecca Romage and Vehicle Pepper Demis during the 2004. 2005 season, the WB finished behind Rival Up for the first time in four years and fell even further behind in fall 2005. Both networks fell behind Spanish language network Univision in the overall 18 to 34 demographic. Between November and December 2005, the network laid off approximately 40 employees amid continued ratings and profit losses with viewership down 12% by November 2005 with network representatives expecting the WB to lose about $35 million during the 2005 to 2006 fiscal year the WB was programming 6 days and 13 hours per week at this time. 2006 network closure on January 24, 2006 CBS Corporation and Warner Brothers. Entertainment announced plans to shut down both UPN and the WB and partner to launch a new broadcast television network that would include series from both soon-to-be predecessor networks, known as the CW over the next eight months. It was to be seen which shows from the two networks would cross over to the CW, as well as which stations aligned with either UP or the WB would become future affiliates of the new network. In the end, 7th Heaven, Beauty and the Jeep, Gilmore Girls, One Tree Hill, Reaver, Smallville, and Supernatural were chosen to move from the WB to the CW for its inaugural 2006-2007 fall schedule. 78 Heaven and Reba were originally cancelled after the 2005-2006 season, but were ultimately renewed at the last minute with 13 episode deals the former show was later given a full season order, while the latter served as the mid-season replacement and, in spite of becoming the CW's highest rated comedy of the 2006-2007 season, ended rather abruptly Supernatural, which aired its final 15. Season in fall 2019 was the last surviving series from the WB that remained on the CW network schedule. Tribune Broadcasting also committed 16 of its 19 WB affiliated stations at the time to serve as the network's core affiliates, though it relinquished its stake in the WB shortly after the launch announcement for the CW in order to avoid shouldering shutdown costs for the WB, and would not take on an ownership stake in the CW alongside 11 UPNONOs that were named as CW charter stations by CBS Corporation. Starting on August 14, 2006, with the daytime WB block, the WB stopped displaying its on-screen logo bug during the network's programming and replaced it with a countdown of days until the CW's premiere. Some stations that either affiliated with my network TV itself created in response to Tribune and CBS receiving affiliation deals with the CW, leaving up an affiliate owned by Fox television stations, a subsidiary of my network TV's original parent company News Corporation, with the prospect of ending up as independents became independent stations or became CW charter affiliates received a logo-free feed of the network. 
while others took the main feed and overlaid the station's own logo bug over the CW's logo. The WB aired its final night of programming on September 17, 2006, with the night of favorites and farewells, a five-hour block of pilot episodes of the network's past signature series. Commercial breaks featured re-airings of past image campaigns and network promotions, along with promotional spots given to cable networks carrying these shows in off-network syndication and ads for each series TV on DVD box set the 60-second montage that closed the WB's existence featured many well-known stars from shows that aired during the 11-year run of the network. Ending with the statement for 11 years, you brought us into your homes. We made you smile and tug at your heart. And now, we say goodbye. From all of us at the WB, thank you. The final image seen in the montage was former network mascot Michigan J. Frog who was shown as a silhouette due to the animated character being retired as the WB's mask of the year before who is shown taking his hat off and bowing, thanking the audience for watching the network for 11 years and marking the end of the WB. The final night of WB programming netted relatively low ratings. The network scored a 1.0 household rating amounting to 1% of all U.S. television households and a share of 2, meaning just 2% of viewers were tuned into the WB on its final night of programming. This is mostly due to the fact that some WB affiliates in certain areas had already joined my network TV, which debuted on September 5th two weeks before the CW's launch. Leaving the WB's final two weeks of programming unavailable in those areas. After its closure, the network's URLs were redirected to the CW's website, cwtv.com. By March 30, 2008, the URLs redirected to the Warner Brothers. Studios homepage before being redirected to the Thu Point Combator website one month later on April 28. The CW maintained many operational and scheduling elements from the WB. When it launched on September 18, 2006, the CW initially maintained the WB scheduling model. The WB had carried 30 hours of network programming each week, 13 of which were devoted to prime time shows in comparison to Upton's weekly programming total of 12 hours, 10 hours of which were allocated to prime time shows. It also inherited the WB 100 Plus station group which became the CW Plus, though the distribution model of the CW Plus started to differ from the WB 100 Plus by mixing digital sub-channel affiliations, alongside the cable-only affiliates and few conventional affiliate stations that were part of the predecessor group at the end of the WB's run. The CW continued the daytime WB block which became the CW daytime and was reduced from two hours to one in 2010, although two blocks that moved to the CW from the WB would eventually be discontinued. Kids WB continued on the CW until May 17, 2008 when it was replaced with the CW for kids after for kids entertainment began programming the CW's Saturday morning block through a time lease agreement. Kids WB was later relaunched as an online portal. The CW discontinued its Sunday primetime schedule in September 2009, effectively ending the Easy View block in the process. 2008 to 2013 internet streaming Warner Bros. television arm planned on resurrecting the WB brand in the form of a website at Thu.com, the website domain used for the official site of the broadcast network. 
the site streamed episodes of series that were broadcast during the WB Television Network's 1995-2006 run, including Gilmore Girls, Smallville, Avowood, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Dawson's Creek, One Tree Hill, Roswell, and What I Like About You. The new incarnation of the Thu.com began in beta testing on April 28, 2008, and officially launched on August 27, the site whose business model resembled that of free to stream services such as Hilo was ad supported and geared primarily to women ages 15 through 39. In addition to older full length series, among which also included All of Us, Hang In with Mr. Cooper, Martin, Jack and Bobby, and Veronica Mars, the website featured original serialized web content including short series and vignettes from such well-known television producers as Josh Swartz and MCG, including Sorority Forever, Pushed, Rockville, California, The Lake, and Children's Hospital, the latter's popularity was sustained enough to receive a run and eventual move to cable television as a regular series on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim. Each of these 10 episode programs ran for 5 minutes. Many other well-known Warner Bros. produced series that did not air on the WB, including Friends and the OC were also made available on the site. However, the website did not include episodes of two of the WB's most popular shows, Charmed and Felicity, as the distribution rights to Charmed are owned by CBS Television Distribution and Felicity's rights are owned by Disney ABC Domestic Television. Comcast offers over 1,000 episodes from the Warner Brothers television library on its video on demand service while Warner Brothers Entertainment did not promote the site in any multimedia ads it had drawn about 250,000 unique viewers a month according to Mincher's Mr. Chapman who had been tracking the site some of its original material had been offered on partner sites such as MySpace and Facebook Data compiled by Comscore Video Metrics showed that 62% of visitors to the site were female. The MCG produced original series Sorority Forever premiered on the site on September 8, 2008. By 2012, it had accrued more than 7.3 million views from two point common partner sites. An original reality series, Rich Girl, Poor Girl from Laguna Beach and Newport Harbor executive producer Gary Auerbach, in which two teenagers from different economic and social backgrounds swap lived similar in format to wife swap and a walk in your shoes had ranked among the top 100 programs in the teenage category on iTunes since its October 20, 2008. To view with the full replacement of the CW's original internet programming efforts with their CW seed portal, the WB website was shut down in December 2013. The closure of the WB website ended, after more than 18 years, the usage of the brand name the WB. However, the legacy of the WB still lives on as of 2019. Various programs that aired on the network air reruns on various cable networks such as MTV2 and TNT. Also, WMJF, a small student-run television station at Towson University just outside Baltimore, Maryland, still uses the same call letters WMJF Michigan J. Frog from when the station was a WB affiliate. Any unlikeness of Michigan J. Frog also adorned the facade of former WB affiliate WBNX TV's studio complex in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Similarly, 
a large Hollywood Lights style sign of the network's logo that was used in the network's backlot themed items, promos, and bumpers is still located near storage facilities at the Warner Brothers Ranch facilities in California. Internet advertising the clothing retailer H&M, not a traditional television advertiser in the United States sponsored Sorority Forever and had some of its clothing worn by characters in the series. Unilever's Axe brand has sponsored Children's Hospital. Warner Horizon Television Executive Vice President Craig Erwich, who oversaw the WB.com, said in regards to these tie-ins, if an advertiser has an interest in a series we have in production, we can work in their products or even adjust our launch dates, if they want to tie it into a special promotion. Many, though not all, of the WB's programming during its 11-year run as a television network was produced by corporate as and Warner Brothers. Television the network schedule during its first two seasons the 1995 mid-season, when it inaugurated its initial Wednesday lineup and the first half of the 1995-1996 season, when the network expanded its programming to Sundays consisted entirely of sitcoms, the first drama series to debut on the network was the Primetime Soap Savannah, which debuted in February 1996 and ran for two seasons until its cancellation in February 1997. The WB's first reality series was the U.S. adaptation of Popsters, which ran for two seasons from 2001 to 2003 in addition to live action programs. The network has experimented with primetime animated series, Pinky and the Brain was the first such series, airing, as part of the network's Sunday lineup from September 1995 to July 1996, before moving exclusively to the kids' WB Saturday lineup due to low ratings in its primetime slot. Most of the animated projects that aired afterward were adult animation series the last such attempts being the Oblongs running for one season in 2001 and was later revived on corporate sister cartoon network's adult swim block and the PJs which moved to the network in 2000 following its cancellation by Fox and ran for only one additional season on the WB The WB also occasionally aired regularly scheduled repeat episodes of first-run series airing on other nights throughout the television season intermittently throughout its history sister. Sister was the first WB series to receive this treatment, with repeats of the sitcom's first two seasons which originally aired on ABC from August 1995 to August 1996. In addition to the first-run episodes that aired on Wednesday nights, this marked the first time that a network aired reruns as part of its regular schedule outside of the summer months since December 1993, when NBC removed repeats of classic concentration from its daytime lineup two years after that program's cancellation from 1998 to 2000, the network also aired episode repeats from the first two seasons of Seventh Heaven during the first hour of its Sunday lineup under the title 70th Heaven Beginnings. This concept was revived during the 2002 through 2003 and 2003 through 2004 seasons with Smallville and Gilmore Girls which aired repeats from their early seasons under the respective titles Smallville Beginnings and Gilmore Girls Beginnings furthermore from September 2002 until the WB ceased operations the network ran a two-hour extension of its Sunday lineup from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern and Pacific 
time known as Easy Viewer Block featuring week behind episode rebroadcasts of select shows from the network's prime time schedule out of all the network series, 7th Heaven which by the time it ended, had become the longest running family drama in television history was the longest running series ever to have aired on the WB, having run on the network for 10 seasons from 1996 to 2006. The program was beaten by Supernatural as the longest running series to originate on the WB in the 2017 through 2018 season, when the latter series began its 13th season 7th Heaven ran for an additional season on the CW from 2006 to 2007. While Supernatural aired on the WB for one season from 2005 to 2006, before moving to the CW in September 2006, where it has aired since. Programming the WB debuted the Kids WB Children's Program Block in September 1995. The lineup initially featured a mix of Warner Brothers' most popular children's shows such as Tiny Toon Adventures, Animaniacs, and later Batman, the animated series, all of which originated either on Fox Kids or in syndication and newer series such as Freakazoid Hysteria Superman. The animated series, Road Rovers, Pinky and the Brain, and Batman Beyond, after the Turner Broadcasting System was acquired by Time Warner in 1996, Kids WB formed an alliance with Cartoon Network, resulting over time in an increasing number of programs being shared between the Block and the Cable Channel in February 1999, Kids WB began airing the American English Dobutha Cayman. The WB acquired the U.S. rights to the Japanese animated series from TV Tokyo earlier that year, from its U.S. premiere in the fall of 1998 up to that point, the show was syndicated the series ultimately became a widespread pop culture phenomenon with the added exposure on the network. Kids WB also acquired the English language dub of Yuji Yahoo, which also saw the type of viewer popularity experienced by the Cayman. Between 2000 and 2005, Kids WB experimented with some live action programming, though the block continued to mainly run animated series. A television series adaptation of R.L. Stein's The Nightmare Room debuted on the block in 2001. It was cancelled after one season. It also aired a live-action made-for-TV movie Zoller, as well as the Jam X Kids All-Star Dance Specials. Network now outrating Fox Kids and the WB sharing more of its children's programming with the cable channel, the WB announced on May 31, 2005, that it would discontinue Kids WB's weekday afternoon block, as it became financially unattractive due to broadcast stations shifting their afternoon target audiences more exclusively to adults by filling the slot with talk, shows and sitcom reruns, on the basis that children's viewing options in that time period have gravitated more towards cable television. Kids WB's weekday programming continued, but with redundant programs and theme weeks until December 30, 2005 the block began to increasingly promote Cartoon Network's afternoon Meguzi block and the Kids WB Saturday morning lineup during the transition the weekday block was replaced on January 2, 2006. By daytime WB a block that featured repeats of sitcoms and drama series formerly aired by the WB and other networks such as ER, 8 Simple Rules, and What I Like About You 5 days later on January 7, 
the kids WB Saturday morning lineup was expanded by one hour the daytime WB block continued on the CW, unofficially renamed the CW Daytime, though occasional on-air promos for the block do not refer to this name the CW also gets. The kids WB name for the network Saturday morning children's programming. However, on October 2, 2007, the CW announced that it would discontinue the kids WB block due to competition with youth-oriented cable channels. Kids WB aired for the last time on May 17, 2008 replaced with a new block program in conjunction with 4Kids Entertainment called the CW4Kids which was replaced by Vortex from August 25, 2012, after seven brands and kids comedy adventures took over programming the block as part of it. Acquisition of much of 4Kids' program library Vortex continue to run until September 27, 2014, before being replaced a week later by one magnificent morning program Twilight and Entertainment, as a result of its distribution deal with the CW, four kids produced Saturday morning blocks for two networks during the 2008 through 2009 season as it already programmed Fox's 4 Hits TV block which was discontinued by that network on December 27, 2008 like its parent network, Kids WB was revived as an online-only network in April 2008. In addition to carrying select previous Kids WB programs, the site also features other archived programs to which Time Warner owns or holds distribution rights, and programs seen on Cartoon Network and Boomerang. This is between the WB and the Big Four Network scheduling at the time of its shutdown, the WB ran only two hours of primetime network programming on Monday through Fridays and five hours on Sundays compared to the three Monday through Saturday and four Sunday primetime hours offered by the big three networks unlike the WB, UP never carried any weekend primetime programming, though it did offer a movie package to its affiliates on weekend afternoons until September 2000, when the latter was replaced with a two-hour repeat block of UP programs this prime time scheduling allowed for many of the network's affiliates to air local newscasts during the 10 to 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time period. The WB never ran network programming on Saturday nights despite the fact that that the network maintained a children's program block on Saturday mornings allowing affiliates to run syndicated programs, sports, movies or network programs that were preempted from earlier in the week due to special programming in the 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time period. The network's Sunday schedule was originally three hours when the WB began programming that night in September 1995, but expanded to five hours from 5 to 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time in September 2002, with the creation of the Easy View Repeat Block that block was retained by the CW, which initially adopted the WB scheduling model until it turned Sunday programming over to its affiliates in September 2009 in comparison to ABC and CBS. The WB also had the fewest hours devoted to daytime programming on weekdays between September 2001, when the network dropped the weekday morning block of kids WB programs and September 2006. Running only two hours of programming each weekday afternoon compared to four and a half hours on CBS and four hours on ABC and NBC in comparison ran only three hours of daytime programming each weekday not counting its morning news program today until September 2000 when it scaled back its daytime programming block to two hours. Because of these reasons, 
the schedules of the WB's affiliates were largely composed of syndicated programming. A distribution the WB was the only English language broadcast network that historically did not have any owned and operated stations. Although Tribune Broadcasting maintained an ownership stake in the WB, its stations in the three largest television markets of New York City WPIX Los Angeles KTLA and Chicago WGNTV were actually affiliates of the network, since Tribune did not have a controlling ownership interest in the network to allow its stations to be constituted as O and OS by 2005, Tribune owned 22.5 percent of the network, while Time Warner held the controlling 77.5 percent interest. Time Warner did not have a station group of its own at the time and still does not in the present day, although its Turner Broadcasting System division did own Atlanta Independent Station WPCHTV then WDBS-TV, the local feed of then Superstation TBS at the time, but it never carried WB programming due to the network's affiliation with Watt, which Tribune Broadcasting had owned from 1999, when it acquired the station from Quest Broadcasting, which was part owned by Tribune to 2006, when it sold the station to the Gannett Company, now Tenna, Incorporated. Unlike the other major networks, the WB distributed its programming in markets that did not have enough commercial television stations to support a standalone WB affiliate to cable only outlets. The superstation feed of WGN TV, now known as WGN America and since converted into a general entertainment cable channel, carried the network's programming from January 1995 to October 1999. To make the WB available primarily to areas where it did not yet have a full-time affiliate. While viewers in the Chicago area saw primetime and kids WB programming on separate stations until September 2004 primetime shows on WGN TV and children's programs on WCTV the WG and Superstation feed carried the WB's entire schedule during the four year period that it carried the network. On September 21, 1998 the WB launched the WB 100 Plus Station Group, an alternate national feed for small and certain mid-sized U.S. markets, generally both within the bottom 110 Nielsen medium markets the service which transmitted its content via an IBM developed data server network that digitally transmitted local and national advertisements, promos, station identifications and customized logo bugs to each individual affiliate, with the programming feeds and accompanying data being relayed via satellite and stored to a wireless PC-based system known as a station in a box was primarily affiliated with cable-only television channels which were mainly operated by area cable providers, though it was also carried on full power or low-power stations in some markets. The WB 100 Plus offered its own master schedule with programs available on the syndication market that were acquired by the WB, including some feature films and infomercials airing outside of network programming hours, the addition of local advertisements and newscasts were at the discretion of the local distributor. Most of the stations that were part of the WB 100 Plus station group joined the CW Plus after the CW's September 2006 launch, though most of the cable-only affiliates that became part of the CW Plus have since been replaced by or converted into digital sub-channels carried by major network affiliates WD05 and Toledo.
Ohio was the only cable exclusive WB affiliate that was not part of the WB 100 plus station group owner block communications which operates area cable provider Buckeye cable system handled programming for WT05 running its own schedule of syndicated programs during non-network hours the model the channel maintained as a CW affiliate until its shutdown and replacement by WTVGDT2 in October 2014 in certain mid-sized and smaller markets, some of the WB stations held dual affiliations with another major network most commonly, up with the WB often serving as the primary affiliation. If there were not enough television stations to allow both networks to maintain separate affiliates, Though this was also the case in a few markets where enough stations were available for a standalone affiliate. News programming News programming on the WB's affiliates was similar to Fox stations at the time in that the quantity of newscasts varied from station to station. Roughly half of the WB's approximately 200 affiliates aired a local newscast in the 10 to 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific 9 to 10 p.m. Central Mountain Time slot at some point during or throughout their affiliations with the network. Fundamentally, the newscast Schedules on WB affiliates varied considerably between stations compared to those affiliated with ABC, CBS, NBC and especially Fox. Most WB affiliates generally ran a two-hour morning newscast on weekdays and or a half-hour or hour-long 10 p.m. newscast on Monday through Fridays only or all seven nights of the week. Although there were a few larger market stations that maintained in-house news departments, that also produced midday newscasts and had morning newscasts that began in the then traditional 5 to 7 a.m. times but early evening newscasts were largely absent on most of these stations the WB affiliate body had pure news producing stations in comparison to stations aligned with the big three television networks NBC, ABC and CBS and considerably fewer than Fox which has only around 70 stations with in-house news departments. With most of its stations outsourcing their news programming to a competitor, when the network launched in January 1995, the WB automatically gained five affiliates with functioning news departments through the initial agreement with Tribune Broadcasting all of whom founded their news operations as either independent stations or during early affiliations with other networks. Such as the Dumont Television Network WGN-TV Chicago, Rupix New York City, Blau Los Angeles, KWGNTV Denver and WVTV Boston, a fifth news producing station owned by Tribune at the time, WGNX Atlanta, was to become a WB Charger affiliate but instead affiliated with CBS. After Wagga TV dropped that network to join Fox in December 1994 through a group-wide affiliation deal between Fox and Wagga. 
Owner New World Communications KPLRTV St. Louis which would not be acquired by Tribune until 2003 when it bought the station from Acme Communications also continued to produce the 9 p.m. newscast as a WB affiliate while Phoenix Arizona's KDVK began running expanded newscasts shortly before joining the WB at the network's launch. It had earlier lost the ABC affiliation to KNXVTV, the WB affiliation. Move to Castle which KTVK began managing under a local marketing agreement upon its sign-on in September 1995. In the late 1990s, Tribune asked the company's remaining WB-affiliated stations that did not run newscasts to develop their own news departments. The only stations to do this were Theft Dallas Fort Worth, KHWB Houston, KSWB TV San Diego, and WPHL TV Philadelphia. The first three debuted their newscasts in 1999, while WPHL had debuted a 10p. M newscast that was produced in conjunction with the Philadelphia Inquirer in 1994, before WPHL took over production of the program in 1996. KSWB and WPHL would both shutter their news departments in 2005, outsourcing production of their 10 p.m. newscasts to NBC-owned and operated stations in their respective markets. Gate SWB restored in-house newscasts after it switched from WB successor the CW to Fox in August 2008. KNTV San Jose became the largest news producing WB affiliate by market size to be owned by a company other than Tribune and the only other affiliate of the network to produce early evening newscasts. After KTVK after it terminated its ABC affiliation and began carrying WB programming in a partial simulcast with then sister station KBWB TV in 2000 before affiliating with and then ultimately being purchased by NBC in 2002. Sinclair Broadcast Group also operated several WB affiliates with local news departments. Raleigh's WLFL was the only WB affiliate that the company owned which had an existing news operation at the time it joined the network. WLFL began producing a 10 p.m. newscast as a Fox affiliate in 1992. Six years before it joined the W.B. Sinclair's Tampa, Buffalo, Milwaukee, Cincinnati, Las Vegas and Norfolk W.B. affiliates began producing their own newscasts through Sinclair's local slash national hybrid news format News Central in the early 2000s. 
the news departments of all seven of those stations were shut down in 2006 due to company-wide cutbacks and Sinclair's news operations and the discontinuance of News Central of the former WB affiliates that produced newscasts during their affiliation with the network. Only WGN TV, Nupix, Black, Staff, and Kyat, all of whom became affiliates of the CW, continue to maintain self supporting news departments as of December 2014, KPLR and KWGN respectively merged their news departments with those of Fox affiliates V and KTVR through a 2008 management agreement between Tribune and local TV. While Wolby's news department was shut down, after a Tribune sold the station to Sunbeam Television in 2006. With production of its 10 p.m. newscast taken over by new sister station WHCH in most markets, the local WB affiliates either outsource news programming to an NBC. ABC or CBS station in the market, either due to insufficient funds for production of their own newscasts or in later years after the FCC permitted duopolies in markets with at least eight unique station owners in 2000. The station being operated through a legal duopoly or operational agreement with the major network affiliate or opted to carry syndicated programming in the hour following the WB's prime time programming. As with Fox affiliates, WB affiliated stations whose newscasts were produced by a same market competitor tended to have fewer programming hours devoted to news than the station producing the broadcasts. Affiliates in 2005 the WB had an estimated audience reach of 91.66% of all U.S. households equivalent to 90,282,480 households with at least one television set the network was carried by 177 VHF and UHF stations in the United States. The WB was also available in Canada on cable and satellite providers through affiliates that are located within proximity to the Canada-U.S. border whose broadcast of WB shows were subject to simultaneous substitution rules imposed by the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission to protect program rights held by a domestically based network and through two affiliates owned by Tribune Broadcasting who picks New York City and Clan. Los Angeles that are classified in that country as superstations, as well as the superstation feed of Chicago affiliate WGNTV. Station standardization when the WB launched in 1995. The network began branding most of its affiliates with a combination of WB or the WB and the station's channel number. This meant that, 
for example, New York City affiliate Rupix and St. Louis affiliate KPLR TV are both referred to as WB11, so Rupix branded as the WB Channel 11 until 1996, and KPLR as its pre-affiliation brand Street Lewis 11 until 1998 Fox originated such naming schemes. And CBS uses similar on-air branding for most of its owned and operated stations NBC and ABC also utilize similar but less extreme naming schemes, while Fox and Up mandated their respective branding schemes on all of their stations, the WB did not. Therefore, other WB affiliates opted to use non-standardized brandings, WGN TV Chicago branded as WG and Channel 9 or simply WGN with the WB's logo placed within the right curve of the station's 9 as an upside down G logo after the network launched and next to a box 9 from 2002 to 2006. Most of the Tribune Company's WB affiliates only use the network's logo within the logos of each station or use the WB name after the call sign in its on-air branding an example was Los Angeles affiliate CLA, which branded as CLA, the WB after dropping its long-standing and generous-sized Channel 5 brand in 1997, many WB affiliates used another form of standardized branding. The network's Lakeland, Florida affiliate serving camp acquired the WWWB call letters and branded on air. As the WB32 it is now known, as Rumor TV other stations would take on it by city branding approach. For example, KHWB Houston was called Houston's WB and Wool VTV Boston was called Boston's WB both used the WB channel number branding prior to incorporating the station city of primary service during the final years of the network's run some stations which follow the scheme use the regional name instead of a specific city such as Capital Region WB for Whoop Albany, New York or Hawaii WB for Honolulu, Hawaii while others also incorporated the channel number such as Philadelphia Affiliate WBHLTV as Philadelphia's WB17 or Mobile, Alabama Affiliate WBPG as the Gulf Coast's WB55. Many stations affiliated with the WB100 Plus Station Group also followed either one of these variations on the city region's WB scheme, though the group's cable-only affiliates also used fictional call signs.